Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi. Welcome to Layout Building. In this episode, I'm going to continue working on our N-Scale Siren Creek project layout. I'll be constructing the last two mainline turnouts. Our N-Scale Siren Creek layout is designed to be small enough that Nicole and I can take it with us when we travel in our RV. It's also a way for me to do some model railroading while I'm waiting for the train room for my future HO scale layout to be completed. In the last episode, I installed the first of several switch machines on the layout, making the first dual gauge turnout fully operational. In this episode, I'm going to continue to work on extending the main line. I already put down some ties. The next turnout will be a partial dual gauge turnout that will allow standard gauge locomotives to access the engine house track. This turnout is not a standard size. It has one straight leg which leads to the standard gauge engine house and a dual gauge curved leg that forms part of the main line. The curve is an approximate 12 and a half inch radius. I have a head start on this one since I already put down the outside rail while I was building the first dual gauge turnout in episode 8. I'll continue with the inside rail which will form one stock rail of the new turnout. A number 17 chisel blade is good for making notches in the wood ties. This will make space for a rail joiner so that the thickness of the rail joiner won't make a bump in the track. I filed the base of the rail where the switch point will make contact. Now I can use the rail joiner to connect the new piece of rail and solder it. I'm holding it straight to make sure there's no kink in the joint. Next I'll solder the rail to the PC board ties just before the head blocks. I'll use my track gauge to tack solder the rail to every third or fourth PC board tie. I'm aligning the center mark on the gauge to the center seam in the roadbed. The rail stops just before the frog area of the future dual gauge turnout near the bridge. I went ahead and placed the second rail of the engine house spur. One piece of rail isn't quite long enough to go all the way around the outside of the curve. I'm going to cut rail pieces so that the gap is near the center of the curve. The curve radius is slightly broader at this point. I'll put down the narrow gauge rail first since it's easier to access without the standard gauge rail in place. Rolling a boxcar is a good way to test the narrow gauge. Now I can install the standard gauge rail. I'll test the standard gauge with a different boxcar. Everything looks good so far. To complete the turnout itself, I'll start with the standard gauge frog. I've cut a short length of rail and tapered one end with a file. I'll use a three-point gauge to place the rail. I'll use my NMRA gauge to check the placement of the point of the frog. The sharp end should be engaged with both stock rails. When I'm happy with the placement, I'll solder the rail to the PC board ties. I've cut a second piece of rail to form the other side of the frog point. It's also tapered, but on the other side. I'll use my three-point gauge to position it. Then I can solder the frog together. Before I continue building the turnout, I need to deal with an issue that's come up. The ends of the dual gauge rails beyond the turnout keep coming unsoldered. I've replaced two wood ties with PC board ties so that I have more places to anchor the rails. I've re-soldered the rails and they're a lot more solid now. While I was at it, I also permanently soldered the outside rails to the PC board ties beyond the point of the frog. Now I need to fill in the rails on the inside of the turnout. For short pieces, sometimes it's helpful to coax a bend into the rail by running it between my fingers before I cut it. It takes some trial and error to make the next piece of the dual frog. I've cut and bent two pieces of rail to rough shape. Just like I did with the other frog, I'll need to file one side of each rail so that they come together in a sharp point. I've soldered both pieces of rail to the ties and to each other. I check my work often with track gauges and the NMRA standards gauge. After some more trial and error, I've bent several more pieces of rail to finish out the double frogs and guard rails and soldered them to the ties. Building this turnout is going much faster than the first dual gauge turnout I built the last time. That experience is definitely helping. Other than the overall shape, so far what I've built is similar to the first turnout. Since this is only a turnout for the standard gauge, from here on out the construction is very similar to a conventional turnout. The main difference is the third rail that carries the narrow gauge along the main line. I build my turnouts with combined switch points and closure rails. I file one end to a tapered point. Doing things this way results in fewer gaps, a smoother path for the equipment, and simpler construction. I solder the rail to the ties near the frog. The tapered end is left loose. Unlike the full dual gauge turnout I built last time, which has three switch points, this one only has two, just like a normal turnout. I've extended the narrow gauge third rail to a point just short of the turnout. The gap in the narrow gauge rail is now relatively short. This will make it easier if I have to remove it to repair the throw bar in the future. The throw bar is made from the same PC board material as the ties. I filed the foil off the ends to keep it from getting soldered to the stock rail. I've popped one point open with a wood tie. I'll solder the throw bar to the points. The NMRA gauge can also be used to check the point clearance. The points should move freely. Now I can install the last piece of rail for the narrow gauge. I've filed a notch in the bottom for clearance where it will cross the throw bar. 
I've installed the switch machine under the table to power this turnout. I showed how I do that in detail in episode 9. The only difference this time is that I reversed the wires that connect to the stationary decoder because the main route through the turnout is on the left. That way when the turnout is closed on the DCC controller it will be lined for the main. Time to have a little fun testing it out. So far, so good. Other than the fact that it's going the other way and on a curve, building the second full dual gauge turnout is going to be just like the one I built in episode 8. For that reason, I'm not going to cover this one in as much detail, except when I run across something that's different. Getting the geometry right for a curved turnout can be difficult. This one has been a challenge partly because for some reason I've been having a harder time seeing the roadbed centerline in this area. I've placed the outside rail, but when I sight down the length, I can see that it's not lining up with the track across the inlet. I couldn't figure out why, so I broke out my laser level. With it lined up, I can see now that sure enough, the rail is too far from the center line in this area. I'll make some adjustments now while it's only tack soldered. I had some trouble with the inside rail as well. It was also not following the center line and kinked too sharply. The original location of the head blocks was making it impossible to get the curve right. To fix it, I ended up redoing the ties in this area and moving the head blocks about an inch toward the harbor. Now the switch points will be a little further from the frog and the curve going into the passing siding is nice and smooth. It was a little bit of a pain to fix, but it will be worth it. The turnout shape now looks better and more importantly, it should operate better. It's far better to take care of these issues now than to build a turnout that will always be troublesome. The rest of the build is pretty much a repeat of the first dual gauge turnout. In addition to the turnout, I've also built part of the passing siding. Let's test it out. Because of the harbor, there isn't much running room to give the turnout a full workout, but it's looking good so far. Now I have all three mainline turnouts working, but before I can run a train, I need to get across the harbor. In the next episode, I'll be constructing a temporary bridge. Stay tuned and thanks for watching. <laughs>